Hello and welcome to my third video on string algorithms. Today I want to continue talking about suffix tree construction algorithms and we will discuss an algorithm named Ukunen's algorithm. First of all, we want to know why we need another suffix tree construction algorithm. The improvement that Ukunen did in 1995 was to make an online algorithm, an example one we can update with new sequences. So if you recall McRae's approach, was for every i from 1 to n plus 1, build compressed trees of x, j to n, followed by the dollar sign, where j is less than or equal to i. Now Ukunen's approach is to do the same, but for j up to i, and then build compressed trees of all suffixes of prefix x dollar, 1 up to i of x dollar. This will give us a suffix tree except for the leaf property. Let's look at how McRae's and Ukunen's differ for, for this example x equals a b a. We see that the two first trees t1 and t2 are similar, but t3 they differ, where Ukunen makes no node for x3 to 3 equals to the letter a. But in the end we have the same suffix tree constructed. So how does this work? Well, in iteration i, we must update each xj up to i to xj up to i plus 1. And we must add string xi plus 1, which is just a special case of the above. So we have three cases. For a leaf, we just append xi plus 1 to the existing xj to i. For an inner node xi plus 1, if it already exists, we do nothing or we have to insert a new child to our node. If we land on an edge, we have the same that xi plus 1 already is contained on the edge or we have to branch to make a new child. This seems rather simple, so we start out by writing our first naive algorithm. One quickly sees that this will give us a running time of o order n cubed. So we need a lot of tricks to get this down to linear time. Now let's see if some of these operations can be reduced. So first of all, if we label leaf with k infinity, this means k to the current i, will automatically update a leaf, meaning our case on leaf is a free operation. Next is if xj up to i plus 1 is already in the tree, the update is automatic. So the first case of inner node and edge is also a free action as we have to do nothing. Now the only real operations is branching on an inner node and edge. We start by introducing a lemma. Let j denote suffix x j up to i of x 1 up to i. The following is true. First, if j is larger than 1, is a leaf node in our tree ti, then so is g minus 1. Second, if from j less than i there is a path in ti that begins with the letter a, then there is a path in ti from j plus 1 beginning with an a. What would this actually mean? Well, for the first part, it means that if we, get, if we get a leaf, it has already been a leaf, simple enough. Second part is, that once we hit an edge, it has already been an edge. Seems logical, not? But let's prove it. So we start with if j larger than 1 is a leaf node in ti, then so is j minus 1. So we prove this by contradiction. We assume j minus 1 is not a leaf. Then there exists a k less than j minus 1, such that we have j minus 1 to be a prefix of k. Well then that would give us that j is equal to k plus 1. And thus if xj up to i and xk plus 1 up to i must have the same branch or be a leaf. For our second part we assume j is followed by an a. Then there exists k less than j such that j is a prefix of k, where j is followed by the character a. Thus, j plus 1 is a prefix of k plus 1, and at the same point we'll still have the character a. Hence, 
j plus 1 is followed by an a. From these two parts of the lemma, we are given a corollary. In iteration i, there exist indices j, l, and j, r such that all suffixes j less than equal to j, l are leaves, and all suffixes j larger than equal to j, r are already in the tree. This is explained using this drawing of a string. So let's look at the consequences of this corollary. We know that 1 and 3 are free operations. We can update our algorithm to look like this. But how do we actually find JL and JR? Well, JL in iteration i is the last leaf inserted in iteration i minus 1, because all smaller indices are already leaves. JR in iteration i is the first index where xj up to j plus 1 is already in the tree. Hence, all larger indices are already in the tree. Now our suffixes in part 2 are made into leaps. Whenever jl is less than j, which is less than jr, j is made a leaf. So once j is a leaf, it will be in 1 and never be in part 2 again. We have to take a look at how much time we take to go from 2 to 1. So we handle j in 2, or implicitly in 3, time 2n. Because the path in our index j in part 2 and the number of iterations can at most form path length of 2n. So our running time is now down to 2n times the time it takes to find xj up to i, because we stated that appending x i plus 1 would take constant time. So hopefully we can show that t of finding xj up to i can be done in constant time. What do we know about xj up to i? Well, we know that it is already in our tree. So we can use fastscan for the search. So the time is order d, where d is a node depth of xj up to i. Also, if we keep suffix links in the tree, we can use these as shortcuts. And our invariant tells us that all inner nodes has suffix links. Just to ensure the invariant, we go through this. So we only insert inner nodes xj up to i when adding leaves j. Whenever we insert a new node xj up to i for some j less than i, we we'll also find or insert xj plus 1 up to i, and can update suffix links of xj up to i to be xj plus 1 up to i. If we insert xi to i, then suffix link of this is the empty string. All right. Now we want to find xj plus 1 up to i from xj up to i. So starting from j on the left side, where initial j is jl, and we keep a pointer to that node between iterations. So we can follow it up, follow the suffix link, and go down to find xj plus 1 to i, and use fastscan from there. So our search is bounded by what ever fastscan takes. So there is a bound on fastscan. It is bounded by n for the maximal node depth in the tree plus total decrease of node depth. So how much do we decrease? Well moving to parent j is 1. Moving to suffix link of parent of j is at max 1. Now we need to restart at jl. So how much time will this take? Here we introduce a little hack on the suffix link. When searching for jl plus 1 up to i, update suffix link of xjl up to i to point to the nearest ancestor of xjl plus 1 up to i so we can restart in constant time. So vertical steps are paid for by the previous horizontal step, meaning free restarting. Horizontal steps are total fast scan bounded by order n, so runtime is order n. Just to summarize this, we have seen a new suffix tree construction algorithm. Bukunin's algorithm is an online algorithm. 
Actually, this is only true as long as no suffix is a prefix of another. The intermediate trees are suffix trees. Also generalized suffix trees can be built one string at a time. Thank you for watching this video about Ukunin's algorithm. For my next video, I will be discussing tandem repeats. If you have any question about this video or suggestion for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description.